Hey everyone, it's Mark. Welcome back to my nightmare. Where I left off, it was about almost a week ago, and in that time, I haven't had a chance to work on this much. We've had three snowstorms, and obviously I've been working my main job, which is going to people's houses and fixing their actual house, not the items in it. I have been doing a lot of digging, trying to find a schematic that isn't worthless. The scan that I got once you get into the actual schematics, all the values of the components, it's completely illegible on many of the pages. So I scoured the internet trying to find a better scan. Everybody that had one, it was the exact same one. I called Tascam, talked to them, and they were like, yeah, sure, we can send you one out. What's your email? It's been 24 hours, I never got anything, so. And who knows, maybe they'd send me the same shitty scan. So here I am. Uh, I have determined that the transformer works, but the motors aren't getting power. So, just as the, the first thing I said when I started the last video was, it's probably something like a power supply. Well, here I am. I'm going to finally get around to testing the power supply because I think I've deciphered the DC voltages I should have coming out of that power supply, because I already know that the AC voltages going in are all correct. So I'm gonna zoom you in and show you what I have of a schematic, which is slightly better than something a kindergartner would scribble with crayons, but I'll zoom you in and show you what we got, and then I'll show me testing them, at which point you'll see in real time, just as I do, that, yep, the power supply doesn't work. So. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I printed out some of these schematics. Here is a random one. This is for the capstan servo. And you see, you can you can pretty much read it. Um, I'll put up a little scan or screenshot right now. You know, you can kind of make it out and that's fine. But what I'm working on is the power supply. And here's what we have for the power supply. And specifically, this is the area I care about, and can you read that? I can't. I will show you a screenshot now of it zoomed in. Not artificially altered to make it look fuzzy, but that's just as good as it is. And I don't know how I'm the only person that's ever taken this scan that's been passed around the entire world and say this sucks, but <laughs> this is what we have to work with. So as you can see, I've been marking it up and even translated some of it. This is everything coming out of the transformer and the different voltages and the what is fused, what isn't, and then, you know, the center taps. And so basically you've got 26 volts across here with a center tap, 40 volts across here with a center tap, and then seven volt, no center tap. And that goes into this power supply. And it's really hard to read any kind of voltages coming out of here. Yeah, then there's also, ah yes, this is the one that it plugs into. And you can kind of almost read a few of those. I mean, like, I might be wrong, but this looks like 15 volts. That looks like minus five or 15 or something. That looks like minus 10 volt. And the STB means stabilized, and ST means non-stabilized. So, I've sort of deciphered that into, I think, on the header pin. Let me swing you around. These header pins right here, this is where the power supply plugs in. Oh, look at that, I got paint on my hands. Now you know what I was doing earlier today. Um, so yeah, these are the pins that go into and out of the power supply board. Down at the bottom here is the AC going in and then kind of scattered throughout the top few plugs are the DC voltages that then jump into the boards that control the motors that aren't working. So I'm assuming I'm not gonna have the proper voltages over here. So to easily find them, I made this little cheat sheet. I can just kind of slide over here and then it'll line up the different voltages I'm supposed to have on those different pins. So I'm gonna get my meter, I'm gonna plug this in, and we will check this together. Okay, here we are. I should have 26 volts across here. 
close enough. I should have 40 volts across here. Close enough. And I should have 7 volts AC across here. I'll take it. Okay, so AC is going in. Here's where the rubber meets the road. Let's see if I have any DC here. Now I think I'm supposed to have 10 volts. Okay, one down. This is a negative voltage. From what I could tell, it looked like 5, but it might have been 15. Oh, that is not good. Let me make a note of that. Okay, and I believe this should be 15 volts. 6 millivolts. Oh, I got 25 volts right next to it, though. I don't know why. I'll have to look at the blurry schematic. I should have 15 here. Nope. Should have minus 15 here. Nope. And that's it. So I've got the 10 volts, and it looks like that is the only DC voltage I have. Except for that 25. I'm going to turn you off and bring you back when I figure that out. Okay, I'm back. Part of the reason I was getting such weird measurements before is because on this board, you see you've got P65432 and pins 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're counting the pins down and the connector numbers up. And then we grab this schematic and we're counting 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we got the connector numbers going down and pins going up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's basically the opposite of that one. But then we grab yet another one here. And now we've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 going down. Except now the pins are going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down instead of up. So between the board and two different schematics, we have three different orientations of these pins, and that is what was screwing me up. Somewhere in there it got jumbled, so I had to rewrite it all down. These are what I should be getting. A few of them I don't know. So anyway, I'm about to test again and see how I compare to this. So I'll go down the list. P6, pin 1, I should have 25 volts. And I have 8.8. .8. Not off to a good start. Uh, next should be a ground. Yeah, that looks about right. This should be 15, got 18 and a half. And it looks like this one should be a ground. Yeah, okay, next one, ground. And then we should have negative 15. Got negative 26, that's weird. And we should have positive 15, nothing. And this one should also be plus 15. Okay, 17. We got a good one there. Okay, coming down, we should have 15 volts on pin one. Nope. So that is definitely a problem. I don't know what these next couple are supposed to be. Well, I'm getting 25 volts. And this one should be minus 15 again. No, 30 millivolts. And this one, I have no idea. Got minus 25. That is weird. This should be 10 volts. Oh, 9.6, finally, something right. This one, I don't know, this goes to a IC 7.8. I think that means my battery's dying. Okay, then I should have nothing and nothing. Yep. Yeah. It's dead, but that's good timing, because the last plug is all AC, and I've already checked those. Looking at my list here, supposed to have 25 volts here, and I've only got 8.8. .8. So something is wrong here. That's good. 15, 18, close enough. That's good, that's good. I don't like this being 15 to 26 volts. I mean, if we were talking 115 and 126, well, maybe, but 15 to 26 as a percentage is a Pretty big difference, so I don't know about that. Obviously, this is supposed to be 15, and it's connected to this, which is also supposed to be 15, and we have zero for both, so that's a big problem. 17 volts here, and I measured 18 volts here, so yeah. Here's where it gets really weird. We got a 15 that's supposed to be zero. That's a problem. 
and I got a minus 15 that I got zero, but up here I got minus 26. Those two should be connected. Yeah, those are connected on here. How am I getting wildly different voltages? All right, meter, can I have two more? Oh, okay, now I'm getting minus 26 like the other one. I must have missed it when I poked the first time. 25 volts, that's about a third what it should be. A minus 15, that's above what it should be. And I got a 15 volt that's dead. So, we got problems. But I know, generally, where they're at. So, I'm gonna study this jumbled mess of the schematic and bring you back. Hey everyone, welcome back. Well, today is tomorrow, and I spent an evening shuffling papers and looking up data sheets, following traces, and I think I have an answer as to why this thing is not working. So I'm going to turn you around, zoom you in, and show you my paperwork. So the next few minutes, either you'll, you don't know anything about electronics and don't plan to ever fix a machine like this, it's gonna be a really boring couple of minutes. But if you're fixing one of these machines or even have a passing interest in electronics, maybe you'll find this useful or interesting, but who knows? <laughs> I know I'm kind of a weirdo that this is entertaining to me, but this is what the channel's for. If you don't like it, there are other channels of people opening boxes and things. Okay, so if you remember, this is what we were working with. And it was really hard to read. So as you can see with this one, I started sketching things out. in my traces that don't have the proper voltages, I traced them and noticed a pattern that we were all seem to be kind of associated with this IC right here which is this guy right here. So I looked up that number. That is an M230L, no, M5230L, I'm sorry. Mitsubishi chip that controls voltages. And if you look at this circuit, the test circuit, it looks very similar to the actual one in use. So, all signs pointing to that. But I still didn't really know what was going on because in this stupid thing, I mean, not only can I not see the values of these different components, I mean, can you tell if that's a resistor or a diode or a capacitor? I mean, like, it's like, here's a blob and then more blobs. I put this into Photoshop, deleted all the actual values and symbols and filled in the blanks by hand. And here you have it. I'll try to get a good shot of that, so if somebody else wants to steal it, go ahead. No guarantees, expressed or implied. So you got the AC voltages coming in. The 26 volt goes through this bridge and gives you the 15 volts DC coming out. The 7 volt AC comes into this bridge and gives us the 10 volts out. And that works just fine. And then here we got the 40, it goes into this bridge, and then that goes through that. I see, which then gives us a dead line and a long, wrong voltage and a wrong voltage. I'm pretty sure that's the culprit. And of course it's obsolete, but there are sellers on eBay selling those. But yeah, so my thought is, remember this line should be negative 15, but it's almost 15 volts too low. This one should be 15 and it's zero, which is also 15 volts too low. The common thread here is this line. So if this were to pull down about 15 volts, it would give us both of those readings. And that is coming right out of that regulator chip. So I'm gonna order a couple of those. I don't know how long it's gonna take. There's a seller on eBay across the country who has them, and it seems like a fair price. I think he wants 10 bucks for two of them. So I'm going to order those, and whenever they show up, I'm going to solder it back into that guy. We're gonna plug it in and everything's gonna work perfectly. Fingers crossed. So there you have it. Crash course in electrical engineering. Uh, no guarantees that anything I said is accurate, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track here. So we will order a Mitsubishi M5230L and hope for the best. See you guys in a few days.